Humpty Dumpty <laughs> sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. You know, there's a lot of truth to that. First of all, raise your hand, raise your hand. Uh, what was Humpty Dumpty in the riddle? Raise your hand. Since you raised your hand, go ahead. Egg. <laughs> so Humpty Dumpty became omelet. <laughs> But all the king horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back again. And that really, that riddle is a lot of truth to it because humanity is very fragile. Yeah. I mean, how many of you that's got gray hair can say, yeah, when I was young, I was bulletproof. And but, you know, I lived like a bald egg. But when I got older, I realized we're not a bald egg. Yeah. We're a raw egg. <laughs> that life is fragile, right? Yeah. Life is fragile and people do get broke up. And they, they do fall off the wall and things happen and lives get broke up. Families get broke up. Uh, health gets broke up. You know, things happen. And, 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 and actually it's true that all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put it back together again. And there are a lot of people I've been hearing just talking, talking about how they are broken. I've heard that more in the last couple of months than any time in my entire life where people go, I'm just broken and I can't be fixed. They're really talking about the, this, the riddle. I'm broken. They're saying I'm Humpty Dumpty and I just, it's just I'm broken and this is how I am. I'm not going to be able to be fixed. And I, I want you to understand something. You write about something. We can't fix ourselves. Listen, self-help does, does not work. That's humanism. You know, we should be looking upward. And so... Uh, and people around you are not going to be able to fix you. But what is impossible for man is possible for God. What is impossible for man is possible for God. And so we're in this series that we're doing right now called Broken. And I want to encourage you that if you know people that are broken, get them here in the next weeks to follow for the next you know, all of August, we're going to be talking about how to go from being broken to getting whole again. And I'm telling you, the Lord will do it. And God can make us whole again. You know, I love seeing the baptism. I love to see people get saved. But God doesn't just want to save you. He wants to make you whole. And I think we miss that in Christianity. Where it's not, you know, saving is the first part. The forgiveness of your sin is the first part. The giving you a new heart is the first part. But he wants to make you whole. He wants to make you whole in your mind. He wants to make you whole in your emotions. He wants to make you whole in your body. He has made you whole in your spirit when you got born again. But it surprises me how, yes, there's many people in the world that are broken or will be broken. But what's sad is we've got a lot of Christians that are still broken. And it breaks my heart that they are broken. You know, it's important that we don't just, you know, uh, idolize our own wholeness and forget about there's still broken people around us. And it should break our heart. We can be whole and have a broke heart. We can rejoice and weep at the same time. And so this is series is about we want to see everyone. This is, this is the goal of this month, that everyone that is coming here listening, that everyone will leave this. By the end of this month, you're going to leave either completely whole or on your way to being completely whole. That's, that's what we want to see. That's what we want to see happen. Now, I want to give you two stories. You know, first story is when the disciples were going in the boat across the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus, and this one, was on the boat. And so Jesus was in the stern of the boat, which makes it a pretty good-sized little boat because you had a stern and you had a cabin and he was sleeping quarters. And so he was sleeping, but a great storm came and began to beat against that boat and water was coming in the boat. And these are professional fishermen, so it's not like they didn't know what they were doing. And so they knew this was a bad situation and... Uh, they called out to the Lord. They went and shook and woke him up. And they said, Lord, do you not care that we're perishing? Of course, Jesus gets up and he said, why were you afraid? Why were you afraid? 
I'm on the boat with you. Why were you afraid? And he spoke to the storm and the waves, and he said, you know, be still. And guess what? The waves and the storm dissipated. Kind of like looking at a radar dock when we were flying back Friday, you know, <laughs> where we needed it to dissipate, right? And the Lord did that for us. And so, you know, the storm calmed, and they were all like, wow. And let me just say, how many of you have ever heard that message preached? Come on, raise your hand. Hey. All right, we all heard that message preached. And how many of you want that for your life? We all want it, but we don't always get it. God can do that. God does do that, but he doesn't always do that. And hence, I go to another story of a, uh, a disciple on the boat, and his name was Paul. You see, in the first story, disciples, Jesus on the boat, storm, calm. Paul gets on the boat, and the storm comes, and the storm didn't stop. And here's the crazy thing. Jesus was still on the boat. Because we know that the angel of the Lord spoke to him, and he said, look, I'm going to save you. This storm is a bad storm, and it's not going to be calmed. It's not going to be calmed this time. And so you're going to have to endure through it. And he said, but I am with you to help you endure through this. And not only am I going to save you, but I'm going to save the 175 other people who are with you. I'm going to save you and all of them, but you need to tell them they need to stay on the boat. If they leave this boat, they ain't going to make it. There are too many people in life abandon ship too early. They abandon relationship. They abandon marriage. They abandon direction. They abandon the impact. They abandon witnessing. They abandon ship too soon. And so here in this story, the Lord said, you better stay on the boat. I know that's going to speak to someone in the room. You better stay on the boat. And what's interesting, I wanted to also see that Paul wasn't just worried about himself, but, but he was also worried about the other, other 175 in which some of them were the Roman soldiers who had him imprisoned. And he was still worried about them and still praying for them. And the other thing I want you to see, this was a name storm. Oh, we know about that in Louisiana. <laughs> see, when they're reading this scripture up north, they just pass right over that. That don't mean anything. But when I looked and I said, and the name of the storm was boom, I ain't going to say it because it's a Greek name and I'll obli obliviate it. So, uh, but it was a name storm. And so this is a name storm. We understand name storms. Because name storms tend to be worse than unnamed storms. I believe some of you in here, you're going through a name storm right now. You're going through something that you, you know what it is. You know its name. It's a name storm that you are going through right now. Here's, here's the wisdom of the Lord through this story. Stay on the boat. Stay on the boat. We have prayed. The Lord is still on the boat. Stay on the boat. Stay on the boat. God is still with us in this thing. And the other thing Paul told him, he said, you guys need to eat. Because they were not eating because they were so worried, so afraid. You ever been so worried, so afraid you can't eat? And so these were these guys were there. And this wasn't just like one day. This was weeks and weeks of this journey. And so he said, you need to strengthen yourself. And one of the things you've got to do when you're in a long storm, come on, we know this in Louisiana, you stock up. You stock up. Come on, you get them potato chips. You got to get the essentials. Potato chips, coffee, little Debbie's, lunch meat, bread. Come on, some Dave's bread. If you want to eat good bread, eat Dave's bread. You ought to send me, Dave, like 10 loaves for just saying that today. <laughs> Someone sent it to Dave's bread. I just endorsed you because it's that good. But Paul told him, he said, eat. You got to eat. You got to strengthen yourself because God's not going to calm this one. Because I think in Christianity, because we're so 
focused on, man, I want a quick miracle that we're not ready for the long enduring one. Where we got to endure through. We got to endure through the storm. The storm's not going to be calmed. For some of you, I'm telling you right now, don't look for the quick fix. But you're going to make it. Here's what I want to tell you. If you stay on the boat, you're going to make it. Strengthen yourself. You're going to make it. You're going to get through this thing. And there's no great, it's no different of a miracle. One miracle calms it. The other miracle gives you strength to get through it. And honestly, if you're having to get through it, the Lord's actually doing something else on top of it. He's strengthening your faith. And you'll be stronger when you come out on the other side. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. He said, okay. And after weeks and weeks of this going on, he said, okay, this is about, we're about to, you know, get to a place where this ship's going to wreck. And this is what all you need to do. Those of you who can swim, swim. (laughs) If you can't swim, you see these planks? (laughs) When it breaks up, you better grab one. And you see these things that are floating around? You see that old box over there? Uh, Lady, you better grab that one because we need to swim if we're going to make it. See, there's a part we have to play in all this. It's not just a lazy Christianity where we don't do it. That's why we call partners with God. That's why the Holy Spirit's called a helper, not a doer. Because there's parts we have to play many times in in finding that, that, that shore. Finding our wholeness, finding our healing, getting to the other side. I I love that saying, you you work like it depends on you and you pray like it depends on God. And then you have about a balance of faith and responsibility there. But this is what I want to say. Sometimes it's a calming of the storm. Other times it's enduring through the storm. I want to show you... Great testimony of a precious couple in our church, Ben and Katie, where they had to endure. Check this out. Hey, guys. Uh, I'm here with Ben and Katie, and I know, you know, I just talked about those two stories where, man, we want to have the, the miracle of the storm being stopped, but sometimes in life, the storm is not stopped. You have to go through the storm. And I'm here with Ben and Katie to talk about that with little Judah. I know all of you have been praying uh, for this family. And, man, you guys are such a precious family. We love you guys. Y'all want to say anything to the church, all the prayers that have been going up for little Judah and you guys? Yeah, we definitely appreciate all the prayers that y'all have said. Uh, yeah, we, we've had a lot of support between Uh, Y'all at the church and family and friends and we're just thankful and grateful for all the prayers that y'all have sent out And you know just kind of give you some feedback uh, and maybe a little backstory for some of you that don't know uh, You know Katie when you had little Judah, it was how many weeks? 24 weeks four days So 24 weeks and four days you got it exactly right (laughs) and so little Judah weighed how much? He weighed 1.8 pounds So 1.8 pounds and, you know, it would have been nice if, you know, we just prayed and you went full term and everything was good. Uh, but it didn't happen that way, did it? No. Nope. You guys have had to go through a process. How many months has it been with you guys taking care of Judah back and forth to the hospital? I mean, how many months has it been? So it's been about five months. About five and a half. About five almost, and a half. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be six months uh, next month. On the 19th. And and just to let y'all know, y'all just got him home not long ago. Yeah, yeah. he's been home for about five or six weeks. Yeah, five or six weeks. So that meant, I mean, you had to be at the hospital and going to the hospital and coming back and traveling and all the finance and the struggle. And, and I know for you guys, you know, going through this was not fun. You didn't ask for it. Maybe. And I'm sure you, you asked many times for God to come on, you know, God just bring us through this. Uh, but it was a journey, and it's still a journey. I mean, as you can see, the auction's about to come off, though. We're getting close. Uh, hopefully within the next few weeks. And you were at the cardiology. Uh, he was able to release yeah, he Legita. Got, he got discharged from the cardiologist uh, just a few days ago. Yeah, so that's huge. 
And so God is moving, it's exciting, but it has not been easy. No. I, it's been a fight. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna, you know, to help those that, there, some things are broken, maybe it could be a marriage, it could be their life, it can be a sickness they're going through, uh, it can be a child that's wayward, uh, it can be finances. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people listening to this, you know, it's great and we're gonna keep praying for God to come just steal the storm, yeah. but the reality is sometimes you just gotta go through it. So I know you got, did y'all get tired? Did y'all get wore out through oh, all yeah. this? Oh yeah, we definitely had some moments of fatigued, tired, you know, just, just difficult situations that we kind of had to work through. Let me ask you this, did you, it, it, and I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but mm -hmm. did you have some moments where there's just some doubt trying to creep in? Yeah, I mean, there, there were times where uh, you really didn't know if things were going to go one way or the other. Uh, we tried to focus on the positive uh, aspect of things and, and not try to entertain the, the doubt and, and that kind of stuff, but, but there were times where, you know, we didn't really know what was going to happen. And as we, we still go through things, but we don't really know what's going to happen. So what did, what did y'all do during those times, you know, Katie, to, to endure through that? Um, mainly scripture. It was knowing what scripture says, but believing that it was true for me. Mm -hmm. So not just like reading the word and knowing, hey, God works all things for good, but it's for his good. So even though I may get bad news this day, even if the Lord, like I had to come to the place where I was like, even if the Lord takes Judah, mm. like I have to be okay with that. And he's still good. Wow. Whew. Making me tear up. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> how did you guys just, you know, at, at times, how important was people encouraging you at the right time that that was huge like early on whenever judah was kind of in the like really acute stage where you didn't really know which way this thing was going to go uh we leaned real heavily on our friends uh family others i don't really know how we could have gotten through this thing without having others to lean on uh, yeah a lot we, so it was you know faith in god trust in god Standing on scriptures. We, we talked about the other day. It was a really bad situation where some levels were messed up. He was going to New Orleans. The Jews going to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and it didn't. It looked not positive. Oh, yeah. And the Lord just actually gave you the scripture for that moment. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to do something. I'm going to get you through this quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it was whenever uh, Judah, he was having some swelling on his brain. And we were praying for it to go down. But it kept going up. And uh, it got to the point where they had to, you know, put him in a helicopter and fly him to New Orleans uh, so he could see a neurosurgeon. And uh, I remember that morning getting up before heading to New Orleans. We didn't know if he was going to have emergency brain surgery that day or, or what. Uh, just, you know, picturing the wind and ra waves and the storm and everything going on. And just thinking of Jesus being in the boat, you know, just sitting there with complete peace and, uh, and just kind of looking at me and reassuring me, hey, look, I'm here with you. Uh, I'm going to take you through this situation. Like, I'm going to carry you and your family. And, uh, and everything's going to be okay no matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. and, and we didn't know what it was going to look like at that time, for sure. Wow. Truly amazing, church. And, I, you know, I want to I wanna say this. How, in, how important, if you're looking at people going through what they're going through, how important it is that... You wake up every day and you, you just got to suit up and you know, even though you're tired, even though you wore out, how important it is to have the attitude, you know what, I'm not giving up and I'm fighting. It's, it's very important. Uh, th there were scriptures that I really held on to throughout this whole situation. It was uh, Psalm 139. And uh, I would get up every single morning, read the entire chapter, meditate on it. And it, it really got me through, you know, the, the first few weeks where you, it really wasn't looking good, uh, but got up, read it, believed it, and uh, and it really got me through. And, and as things progressed, you know, I found different scripture to, to read. I would text Katie uh, different things. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely a battle that you have to suit up for and, and, and not have a 
you know, why is this happening to me attitude all the time. Like, you've got to, you know, go on the attack, I guess, and, and have some things, uh, you know, that you can, you can read that encourage you. Amen. Well, we as a church appreciate you guys so much. Uh, you, your, your family, mm -hmm. and little Judah. I love Judah. What does Judah stand for? Uh, Judah stands for uh, praise. 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 And so what a name. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes when you go through things and it's bad, you know, the best thing you can do is praise. start praising God. Praise. And I know when I, I walked in the house, uh, I was I was like, wow, before we just filmed, uh, they had praise and worship on always. on the TV. And is it always on? Always. Does that help you guys? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it just, it just tries to bring peace, calm. Uh, you know, with a, a crazy house, we got, well, at one point we had three under three. Now it's... Uh, newly three newly three so it gets a little crazy so uh yeah the worship definitely helps to bring a spirit of peace and calmness and uh so judah enjoy. so judah's gonna be on the worship team right uh, so sarah be. sarah we need to make money for judah uh but before we go why don't you if we can just lift him up let the church see little judah what a miracle oh my god what a miracle how much he weighs now he is almost 10 pounds almost 10 pounds church can you just just give the lord a hand clap Come on, just give the Lord a hand clap. Give this couple a hand clap. What an amazing, amazing uh, testimony it is that you guys wake up, you fight, you didn't lose faith, you didn't lose hope, and little Judah is a miracle. Yeah. And we just thank God for y'all. And guess what? It's not just for you. It's for anyone who's for willing everyone. to fight for it. It's for everyone. Amen? Well, thank you, church. God bless you. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. Wow. You know, uh, the quote up there, the will to fight for your healing and wholeness is important when you're broken. I, I want to talk about this for a second. All right. You got to be, it's, when I begin to pray about this whole series, Broken, and I begin to meditate and ask the Holy Spirit to just, you know, bring me what he wanted to bring me. Uh, the first thing he, he told me, he says, if they do not have a will to fight, it's little that he is able to do. The first thing you have to do is you got to be willing to fight. I mean, come on, we know this in the medical field that someone who doesn't have a will to live and something little happens to them, but they just have no will to live, the doctors can't save them even though the doctors could save them in, in those scenarios. Uh, they're not because they have such a weak will to live. So they have no fight in them. But then you have other people we know in the medical field that everything that happened to them and all the injuries and everything, they should not make it. But because they just won't quit. They just keep fighting. They refuse to give up. Mr. Royal, I was thinking about you about this. You know, you've had cancer twice. And every time he says, I'm just going to keep fighting. I'm not, I'm not going to give into it. I'm going to keep fighting. And we have to find that will to fight. And, and the Lord will use that to bring about your wholeness. The, the problem is, and, and today we, we end up, you know, fighting the wrong thing. Or we don't fight at all because we have lost the grit of Christianity. It's the same way, this whole idea of... Uh, uh, taking away the masculinity of men in our society where there's no fight in men anymore, trying to get that out of them. And that's nowhere you see that in Scripture. I mean, these, were, these, were, these Christians, even when you look at Christians' walks and men of the Bible, I mean, they, were, they, were, they had a fight in them. And so the same way they're doing that, they're also doing it in Christianity where they're taking the grit out of Christianity and, and even, you know, everything is moved to I'm a victim instead of I'm a victor. And when you have a victim attitude, let me tell you something. You're going to stay in your brokenness. But you've got to get up and say, you know what? I mean, no different than if someone came, uh, attack me, I'm just going to do nothing. No, I'm going to fight back. If someone tried to attack your children, would you do something or you just sit there and look? No, you're going to fight back. You're going to fight back. It was on Fox News. I was looking this morning. This guy, uh, some guy was uh, beating up and, and attacking some people, and a lot of people were just passing it up, wouldn't do nothing. This guy went in. He was an MMA fighter, 
And he went in in 30 seconds. He had the guy down, and he had it taken care of, and he was holding him down, videoing uh, the whole thing. And uh, just, you know, because he was willing to fight, he stopped the attack. You know, the devil, if he's fighting and getting no resistance, why wouldn't he keep fighting? But if he's fighting and you get up in your spirit, I love that song. God, come on, so get up. And you get up in your spirit and you begin to fight him back. Guess what? He's going to think twice about coming after you. Come on. He's going to think twice about coming after your family, your children, your marriage, your children. Listen, we've got to have, we've got to get back the fight of Christianity, the grit of Christianity. Instead of walking around with a victim mentality. And look, for, for some, they're in that, and I'm just encouraging you, God doesn't want you to be the victim mentality. Sometimes you are a victim, but you don't stay a victim. You get back up, and you become a victor. God wants to be a victor. It's important for us to understand this. Listen, fight for your life and fight for the lives of those around you. This is what we're called to do. And and that's why in the Bible it talks about the armor of God. He says, when you wake up, put on pajamas. When you wake up, put on play clothes. When you wake up, put on shackles. No, he said, when you wake up, put on the armor of God. This idea of, you know, I'm just a victim. Well, quit being the victim. Put on the armor of God and fight back. Fight back. Fight back. How you start? The helmet of salvation. First thing we got to realize, wait a second, I am a child of God. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of sound mind. I am a child of the king. I have been forgiven. I have been empowered. I'm not fighting alone. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm going to get up and I'm going to fight because I have the power of God in me to win. And then you put on the belt of truth. Let me, let me, see, we say these things, but we don't, we don't, I don't think grasp them sometimes. Okay, here's a belt of truth for you. My body was bought just like my soul. And my body belongs to God. So I need to do what it takes to know the truth about what it takes to be healthy. So I'm going to study what it means to be healthy. I'm going to look through the scriptures and see that you got to have a day's rest and you can't just be going for seven days. I'm even look at there's dietary laws and the dietary laws are for a reason so that the people can be healthier than all other people. They got cleanliness laws that were there. And that was so the Jews during the uh, bubonic plague did not catch it because of their cleanliness of following what God said to do. And I'm not saying we're going back under the laws. What I'm saying is you learn from the principles of those laws and what God was saying. And so I find out the truth of what my body needs. I study it. I look. I understand that. Guess what? Going outside is very healing. So I've looked at studies. I'm talking about truth, and I found the truth that if you want to be healthier, you need to walk and be outside at least 30 minutes a day. I found the truth that if you're not exerting yourself, you need to work out so that your body can keep itself up because it was designed that way. And because I know the truth of all that, I am going to be able to swim hard for my healing and my wholeness. That's just one area. And it's just real short, real small. Bam, right there. To the point, you know, I, I look at YouTubes for people who are 55 and older. And I'm looking for what it takes to stay healthy. What am I doing? I'm finding truth. Because I know the truth of the scriptures and I have a responsibility to it all. And see, that's truth. And so, but then, then you shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel. You see, a lot of times people, when they when they're in the storms, they're only, it, they turn real self-centered. And I say this respectfully and lovingly, but it's all about them. Except when I've seen Christians, even when they were in the hospital, even when something bad was going on, they were like, man, I witnessed to three nurses and one doctor and three families that came in. Amen. Come on, you know what I'm saying? I, man, this is my chance to be a witness. The people to see me suffer in Christ. 
Uh, this is my chance. Jesus suffered so that others would be saved. May in my suffering, may someone else be touched, Lord. And because you keep purpose. See, when you lose purpose, you, you're going to go down mentally. You're going to go down emotionally. But when you have purpose and you suit up with that purpose every day and you put on the breastplate of righteousness, meaning the righteous acts that God will use you to do. How does people get their healing? Like when they go through even loss is they make their mission then of helping people who are in that same situation and by helping others, their healing comes to them. Come on, we know this, we know this. It's not a, it's not a victim mentality. It's a standing up and saying enough is enough and I'm gonna do something about it. I'm gonna do something about it. And then you put the shield of faith because you're gonna get hit. We're all gonna get shot at. But you know what? We have faith to pull up that shield and block the fiery arrows that the devil is throwing at us. That's why your faith is so important. You gotta keep faith in God. Faith means I'm gonna trust him. Like Katie said, I'm gonna believe this scripture is for me. Not that it's just a scripture of God's word, but it's for me. And I'm gonna stand on it because when I'm standing on the rock, no wind, no storm, no waves, none of it can knock me down because I'm standing on the rock of Jesus Christ. Come on, someone. And I pulled out my sword and I began to wield it and quote the word of the Lord. I begin to quote the word of the Lord. I am healed. I am whole. I am a child of God. You have no hold on me. I am a servant of the most high God. God, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. This is what I'm talking about. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, the holy anointing of God in this place. Come on, no one moving, no one going anywhere. Listen, God's about to do something so amazing in this place. 1 Timothy 6.12 says, fight the good fight of faith. You see, this whole idea that you're being, you're being fed, that you're a victim, and, you know, that God's not enough. Someone the other day, they actually said, don't go to Pastor Mark because all he's going to give you is God. I'm like, yes! Yes! Let me tell you something. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life. Let me just say one thing. I'm going to say one thing. Pastor Terry, you and I were talking about this. You know why your flesh doesn't want to do what it takes for eternity? Because it has, it has no incentive to do so. Because your flesh is not going to eternity. Flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom of God. So because your flesh is not going there, it doesn't want you to do anything that's concerned with there. But we are not just flesh and blood. We are spirit. And our spirits will rise up and fight. I love that. And it says, and for which you are made good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Let me tell you something, guys. We got to fight. You got to fight. Listen, this whole idea that, you know, it's a wel welfare Christianity where it just, you know, it's given to you. You don't have to do anything. That's hogwash. We know that the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, the Lord looked at the promised land and said, it's all yours right there. It's yours. I gave it to you. Go ahead. And they looked and they said, wait a minute. Uh, it's occupied. And there's giants. And they had 10 of the spies say, oh, we can't go do that. These are giants. They're bigger than us. But you had your Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. They said, yeah, they're giants. But our God is bigger than that. Yeah. And you see, the whole idea was God said, here it is, but you got to fight for it. Come on, anyone knows this. If you want a great marriage, you're going to have to fight for it. Yeah. If you want your children to be raised up and be impactors in this world that we live today, we're going to have to fight. If you want, if you want freedom, you're going to have to fight for it. If you want to not live in sin, you're going to have to fight for it. Come on. If our church is going to survive and impact the world, we are going to have to fight for it.
If we're gonna turn around this country, we're gonna have to fight for it. Can I get an amen? In the same way, whatever storm you're in right now, you need to learn to start fighting. You know, one of the places we fight is on our knees. Who right now, you're in a storm. Oh, regardless of what the storm is, raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. All over this place, all over this place. Guess what? We're about to fight. We're about to fight. Those of you who got your hands raised, you, I want to encourage you, you're going to get through this storm. You are victors in the, in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you raise your hand, I want you to get down here to this altar. We're going to begin to sing. We're going to begin to press in. I need my pastors. I need my leaders. Come on, we're going to crowd to God. If you're out in the uh, congregation, just begin to lift your hands. Come on, the presence of Jesus. Come, presence of Jesus. Come, presence of Jesus. Come on, you get here, fight. Come on, fight. Come on, fight. Call out to him, fight. Fight. Come on, fight.
your people almighty God we rise up as a people we awaken from sleep may wholeness and healing be yours but you gotta fight you gotta fight come on say fight, fight. come on lift your hands say fight 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 fight, fight. 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 Come on, give the Lord a hand clap, amen. I love y'all. Let's change the world together. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video. Comment if there's anything on your heart that you would like to share with the community. And be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you can be alerted every time we upload something new. You be blessed.